Well, hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous mid-fall day in August. It is Tuesday, where are we now? August 3rd, 2021, feeling like October. I think, nah, are we gonna get somewhere near 80 degrees today? So anyway, guys, I need to get out there and enjoy this gorgeous day. But before I do that, we're just gonna do what I do every day, and that's chronicle the collapse of a planet. But before I even do that, I want to send out some uh, big thank yous, you know, since I decided... Uh, when was it about a week ago to demonetize this channel that I was sick and tired of dealing with Google. Uh, I'm just asking anybody who wanted to throw me a bone, me and the little dog, and uh, I just want to thank my new patrons. Send out a big thank you to all of my new patrons. Let's see. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Luciano. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Reston. And thank you, Mark. Like every one of you, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, also, although I don't have the names here, I really appreciate anyone who has contributed to my PayPal account. And finally, a big thank you to everyone who uh, contributed to the GoFundMe to build the new kitchen. We should have the new kitchen finished today, and I will be sure to post a video so you can know what you're donations went towards but i really really do appreciate guys particularly since i'm no longer making you sit through those ads uh anybody who appreciates what i can do what what i what i do with my life whatever that is uh, i always have the information on how to donate to this channel but that out of the way that pleasant task out of the way uh, we're just gonna combine two stories that I'm sorry that I don't remember the alert tribes member who sent me this one from science alert <clears throat> nearly 14,000 scientists warned that Earth's vital signs are rapidly worsening it sounds a bit like the start of a joke. What brings together 14,000 scientists and 1,990 jurisdictions in 34 countries? Unfortunately, the punchline, the climate crisis, is anything but funny. In a new report, experts have issued yet another warning about the state of our planet and this latest update is truly devastating. We had ghastly, we had the ghastly future report yesterday. Today we have the truly devastating uh, prediction for the future of this planet. Okay, quoting the report, signed by 14,000 scientists, we are nearing or have already crossed tipping points associated with critical parts of the Earth system, including the West Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets, warm water coral reefs, and the Amazon rainforest. Given these alarming developments, we need short frequently and easily accessible updates on the climate emergency. Close quote. Well, that's what I do. So 
you guys can keep checking in with Collapse Chronicles for your frequently and easily accessible updates on the climate emergency. Okay, back in the, you know, the Pleistocene of 2019, 11,258 scientists published a report in the journal Bioscience warning the world of the stark climate emergency we are facing. Almost two years later, things have not magically turned around. This is, uh, I guess he's one of the 14,000 scientists. This is Thomas Newsom, an ecologist from the University of Sydney. Quote, especially troubling is the increase in climate-related disasters, including the Australian megafires and the fact that three main greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, set records for atmospheric concentrations in 2020 and again in 2021. This was despite shifts during the Corona panic, close quote. You know, this, uh, this myth out there that I, I don't know where this myth, uh, I mean, I have some idea where this myth was created that the Corona panic, uh, we saw a decline in uh, these three greenhouse gas concentrations. Um, uh, anyway, but you can disabuse yourself of that myth. There were more greenhouse gases uh, emitted into this atmosphere in 2020 than in 2019, more in 2021 than in 2020. There will be more in 20, anyway, you get it. Okay, the new report also published in Bioscience has added another 2,800 scientists' names to the growing collective. Noted that 1,990 jurisdictions have formally declared or recognized a climate emergency and provided a policy approach to be able to mitigate some of the damage we're doing to our warming planet. The research, is this Paul's bar stool? Uh, yes, the researchers suggest a three-pronged near-term policy approach. Yes, uh, anyway guys, all of this way, you know, that scientist uh, claiming that politics are going to turn this around all the ways that politicians are going to save the planet. But we are going uh, not to waste our breath on that. Of course, climate scientists have been screaming from the rooftops about the dangers of anthropogenic climate change since at least the 1960s and have been offering various solutions in different ways since the 1980s. Despite what rampant, despite knowing, despite knowing what rampant use of fossil fuels is doing to Earth's climate, humanity's greenhouse gas emissions have kept going up. And global warming, not counting the Finger Lakes of upstate New York, has increased as a result. Now, scientists warn we have no more time left to waste, says Newsom, quote, we suggest an urgent need for transformative change to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and more broadly human overexploitation of the planet. Opportunities still exist. Yes, blah, blah, blah. Okay. However, despite <clears throat> 
many of the 31 vital signs or benchmarks like ocean changes, the number of livestock and melting ice being at horrible all-time highs, there are a few glimmers of hope. There are a few glimmers of hope. Yes. In the last three years, <coughs> solar and wind power has increased by 57%, although that is still 19 times lower than fossil fuel consumption. And of course, all it is is added to the fossil fuel consumption. And even if fossil fuels were nowhere in it, it is a big green lie. Yes. Um, blah, blah, blah. The new report was released to align with the latest IPCC report due next week, which is hopefully going to be even more of a wake-up call. Yes. Scientists are left hoping. Scientists are left hoping that enough political will exists out there to make the necessary policy changes needed to quite literally save the world. Yes. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I'm not going to actually click on the actual report from Bioscience. Anyway, but uh, going hand in hand with that one, I really appreciated this one from NBC News. Climate change fears spur more Americans to join survivalist schools. So this article is talking about any American with a brain uh, knowing damn well uh, that politicians... Uh, a, do not have the political will to do a damn thing to save the world. Uh, and even if they had the will, there's nothing they could do about it. As more and more people understand uh, that we are doomed, and uh, I guess some people take the tack, you might as well get out there and enjoy it while you still can. I guess others, which I've never understood these survivalists, why would anybody want to be around when, when all of this uh, shit hits the fan? But apparently, uh, this human drive to survive... Yes. <clears throat> Manhattanite David D'Alessio spent a recent Saturday cobbling together a shelter out of muddy leaves and twigs in a wooded stretch 75 miles north of New York City while the wilderness training on the 90-acre grounds of the Mountain Scout Survival School has traditionally attracted outdoor enthusiasts. The musician was among several of the 18 attendees who were learning to drink water out of a vine or set traps for rabbits. Yes, those are skills. D'Alessio, age 49, the father of a six-year-old girl facing a horrendous future and painful death, fears will become those are skills Delasio fears will become essential in the coming years as the impacts of climate change continue to worsen. Um, quoting the 49-year-old father of a six-year-old child, quote, it is an inevitability that we will be facing a crisis within our lifetime within my lifetime and certainly within my daughter's, he said. Yes, survivalist school instructors across the country say there has been an increasing interest in their wilderness 
and urban disaster preparedness and courses from Americans worried about climate change as rising temperatures bring more wildfires, droughts, and destructive storms. These types of courses are no longer the domain of campers and hunters. One of these schools' fastest growing demographics is now young families. This is, uh, it, quote, it was never like that before, said Shane Hobel, founder of the Mountain Scout Survival School. Um, it's hard to measure the depth of the trend as there is no industry trade association tabula tabulating statistics across the country, but Hobel estimated that increased interest in his course is fueled by 50% climate change and 50% the political stuff. Yes, whichever their particular nightmare scenario, there is a shared concern among some of his clientele that the foundation on which modern society rests is increasingly fragile. Uh, said Hobel, quote, if something breaks down, if the grid, if the grid drops out, all of this modern technology fails us instantaneously. Very few people in the country are foraging and hunting each day, but there is no other technology that is going to save you. These skills will keep you alive, period, close quote. Uh, that sort of rhetoric may sound alarmist, but there are some ominous clouds on the horizon. The IPCC has forecast a temperature rise of 2.5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit over the next century. Some scientists consider even that a conservative estimate. And as temperatures rise, so do the repercussions. Let's don't forget the record 4.3 million acres burned in California last year and the state's wildfire season started earlier this year. Um, here is uh, sea level rise and increased flooding could upend life for the roughly 40% of Americans who live along the coast. Hurricanes have been increasing in intensity and frequency. And of course, uh, last year, 30 cyclones devastated Central America, causing a climate migration crisis in the region and giving a coming attraction of the type of disaster movie images to expect across the planet. Uh, anyway, uh, so how is this playing out in survival school? Travis Johnson, founder and senior survival skills instructor at Northwest Survival School in Washington State, doesn't need to imagine those future scenar scenarios. He can smell it. Taking a batch of students into the mountains for advanced training last month,